had six months to actually take a solid fuel ramjet from concept, literally uh, drawings on a whiteboard, to get in it in flight. We had to keep things small and inexpensive so that we could move forward quickly. One of the biggest barriers that we face right from the start is a risk averse culture. We need to take the handcuffs off our folks and let them charge ahead. Uh, Zulu Corey and his folks out of China Lake, uh, he challenged the team back earlier in the summer to, uh, and this is back in the May timeframe, uh, to go fly a solid fuel ramjet engine on a weapon. Hadn't been done out of China Lake for decades, decades. Graybeards out there said it can't be done. Uh, we challenged them to do it by uh, Halloween. Uh, when I was out there in May, I challenged them to do it by the end of the summer, so one September. About three weeks ago, they flew it the first time. It didn't work. The, the ramjet never ignited. So immediately folks rolled in and said, hey, you took too much risk. That's why it didn't work. You guys, we need to do a full uh, failure analysis, and it's going to be a couple months before you can fly again. Admiral Corey, to his credit, said, no, that's BS. Do you guys think you know what was wrong? They said, yes. They said, go fix it. I want to fly again next week. They flew again the following week, and it worked. So this solid fuel ramjet team has uh, taught me an enormous amount about um, how to take risks. I will tell you that in the beginning, I thought we were talking about technical risk, but the risk that ended up being the most difficult was personal professional risk. After the first shot didn't go exactly as expected, um, it, they had an opportunity, when do we shoot again? Do we wait until we're sure? Do we reduce all the data? Or do we think we know enough and to take a chance? And that was a difficult question, and I'm very proud of the team. It's important to take risks because right now our adversary is outpacing us in many ways. We need to build a culture where we recognize that taking risks means we're going to make some mistakes up front, but we're going to get products and capabilities to the fleet and in the hands of the fleet quicker. The solid fuel ramjet in particular is one of these technologies that is a very enabling technology, allowing us to to fly three times the distance of a current solid rocket motor of the similar size. And so the combination of range and speed is an absolutely, absolutely enabling technology for a warfighter that they need now. So what the solid fuel ramjet team did differently in this case is they recognized that in order to take risks, we have to cut out unnecessary processes. So they assembled a team of ESDPs along with senior technical experts and focused on exactly what are we trying to do and let's recognize that the way we're going to move faster except, is accept that we may fail early and we may fail often but we're going to learn from our failures. And so challenging this team to show how we can go fast was to give us an example uh, that we could share with other groups as well as putting a new technology into the field. It doesn't have to take 10 years to get something done. We can no longer go through the usual processes to develop a motor, an airframe, um, your guidance system. So what we had to do is we had to go off of stuff that already existed. So we took stuff that would come off the shelf, we were able to order from somebody, and then we'd make that integrate into a solid fuel ramjet. So we made a solid fuel ramjet out of things that we could get readily available. The reason that we as a team were so successful, uh, it's, it's really multifaceted. Uh, first and foremost, we have a very capable team that's small, it's nimble, we're able to respond to the needs as they arise. We communicate every single day, many times a day, uh, so that we are always up to speed with what's taking place. We kept the vehicle small so that we could test it at our PRL site so it would be very inexpensive to test and we'd also be able to buy the parts cheaply and quickly. But we also had commitment from the top. We had Admiral Corey, JJ, um, and Dan Carino, they were all on board and as a result of them pulling from the top, we were able to push from the bottom, they could pull from the top, and we were able to move things quickly through the machine shops, through procurements, through, um, through the testing ranges. And uh, that allowed us to move quickly, and that's why we were able to be successful.